Hi, everyone. Thank y'all for joining us for our Beef Brunch news update on Tuesday, September 19th. Um, you don't get to see our faces today if you're watching the video. Lee and I are both on the road separately. Um, he's up in northwest Louisiana. I'm in southeast Louisiana. And Vince is out on a field call. Um, two main things that Vince said to mention for him is, of course, hay shortages. Um, if you're looking for hay, and I'm sure Lee will add to this a little bit, but if you're looking for hay, everyone's going out of state for it. Um, it's People are bailing just about everything, and I know we've said this on the past, I don't know how many news updates, but please, please, please get stuff tested. Um, if you don't know how to or if you need um, any assistance, and testing any of your hay or haylage or anything, please let us know and um, an agent can come out and assist you with that. The second thing that Vince mentioned um, associated with the grout, drought, excuse me, um, is considerations and thinking about planting ryegrass. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Lee because I know he's probably going to elaborate on that a little bit more. Lee? Thank you, Ashley. Glad to be with you all here today. Uh, it's unfortunate I can't join you via video, but from my perspective, at least, it'll enhance the quality of this news update, y'all not being able to see my face. Um, but by and large, across northwest Louisiana and north Louisiana as a whole, we received some beneficial rains last week associated with a cold front that moved through. Uh, it was the first widespread rain that we had gotten region-wide in, I can't tell you when. Um, amounts were wide and varying. That's the two words I would use, use to describe it. I've heard just some ridiculous high amounts over northeast Louisiana, but I haven't verified those, so I'm not even going to report them. Uh, most people saw between a half and an inch and a half in northwest Louisiana. Some people were lucky enough to get uh, multi-day rains. The rains that came were beneficial because for the most part they were slow rains and that's most beneficial uh, during, a, during a drought period like this whenever you can get that slow rain spread out over a long amount of time. You go out to and kick the ground, um, it, it, it's, it's just as dry as it can be and hard as it can be. And a lot of times even whenever we get these big rainfalls, but they all come in a hurry, they're centered under one little cell, a thunderstorm. Um, that rain will, is bad to run off, especially in the hill ground. You don't get much soaking. So you couldn't have picked a better rain than what most of us experienced last week. The only problem is if it wasn't enough. Um, it, it, it did wonders, but it still was not enough to dig us out of the hole that we've gotten ourselves into. Talked to a lot of people across northwest Louisiana, north central Louisiana, and everybody has appreciated it, and everybody says the same thing, that it has greened the grass up in pastures and hay fields, but the grass is not growing. And I think we have two things at work on that. I, I know we have two things at work. One being the fact that um, it just wasn't enough, folks. It wasn't enough to, to change the, the, the drought paradigm that we're working under right now. But something else that's really coming into play, especially this time of year, is the fact that um, days are getting shorter. We're losing um, daylight growing hours. Um, you can see that by going outside you know, uh, at, at 7 o'clock at night versus the way it was just a month ago. The other thing is the fact of these nighttime lows, folks. It was important and, and so crucial for us to get away from these high temperatures that have been plaguing us for the last month or so. And, and uh, we're, we're grateful for that break. But at the same time, when we start dipping down into the 60s for nighttime lows, that really puts a halt on these warm season forage uh, growth. And we're there folks we're uh we're, we're getting some nighttime lows even down in the high 50s in portions of northwest louisiana right now so it's kind of grinding to a halt it's changed the color of a lot of these warm season grasses and forages but it hadn't promoted a lot of growth and that leaves a lot of people uh fe feeling anxious you know ashley mentioned and vince sent word with ashley about hay shortages 
we've known there's a hay shortage. We've been talking about it on these news updates for the last month and a half, two months now. And there's a whole lot of producers that have been sitting, waiting in the wings. I talk to them and they say the same thing. If we could just get a rain and make one more cutting, we'll be good. And I'm not saying that we won't, but the yields will be significantly impacted uh, when, when that last cutting does come into play. And so that naturally segues into the um, what Vince and I actually stated too about ryegrass. And we know that uh, a lot of producers are going to rely heavily on ryegrass. And I, I, I didn't talk to Ben, so I, I hope I state his concerns correctly. I'll tell you what my concerns are. One is, is moisture. Uh, we, we've got to get some additional moisture to plant. And I know that there are some people that are, that are planning to start planting uh, very soon, and, and, and rightfully so. But we've got to get some, some added moisture to get adequate germination and growth on that ryegrass or other cool season forages. Another big concern that's, that I have with planting ryegrass this time of the year is the threat of armyworms. And I, I'll admit I have not heard any cases of armyworms. We saw some smattering of reports almost a month ago, but as far as northwest Louisiana goes, I haven't heard any reports, uh, in, not in, in quite some time. But that is always a concern this time of the year whenever you plant ryegrass and say that we do get some beneficial rains. Uh, we're, they're still a concern, folks, and we need to proceed carefully and plan accordingly. The other thing is ryegrass seed and other cool season uh, varieties. The, the availability of seed, if you haven't already booked that ryegrass seed, I highly encourage you to talk to whichever seed dealer, uh, co-op, or wherever you're buying from, and go on and get your seed spoken for. Right now, the demand is going to be intense because of, of the hay shortage. People are, are going to try to supplement with additional ryegrass plantings. I've heard of some people that are changing up varieties that they plant, some seeding rate changes. People are just trying some different things to lower the cost down. And you just got to look at, at at seed availability. Don't wait to the last minute, folks. Don't get ever. Don't get the the drill hooked up or the disc hooked up and get you know get ready to plant and and wait till the last minute to go to the store and pick up your seed. You need to go on and and get that uh, spoken for. As far as the um, the markets go on hay, I got asked last week about. Uh, hay reports, uh, uh, hay sales reports. And uh, it was it was a genuine question about uh, do we record any data related to, to, to hay sales in the hay market? And no, we don't. You can call your local county agent. They can usually ballpark it as to what hay is bringing in your corner of the, in their corner of the world. But it's very difficult in Louisiana and across the southeast just because of the fact that not all hay is created equal and uh, a lot of hay producers in Louisiana do sell hay by the bale instead of by the ton. That's the main reason that kind of precludes us from being able to put together any market data related to the hay sales and hay production. So I, I wish we were able to do that, but just, just the fact of so many, a lot of the hay marketed is, you know, four by five foot in, in diameter, um, all the way up to five foot by six foot in diameter. And there's a big weight difference, folks, between those those two uh, bale sizes, and, and it, you can see some extreme variation in it. Uh, quality plays a huge role in hay prices as well. I know Vince has talked about extensively on this report a lot of people baling and planning on feeding rice straw. Up there, our way, rice is not a, a commodity that's produced to any extent, but there are a lot of folks up our way that are looking at feeding some corn stover. And, you know, that comes with some of the same concerns that, that, um, that rice straw has. I think that which, whatever you choose to feed, you need to have a good supplementation plan, and we've talked about that extensively, not only on these news updates, 
but on our Beef Brunch Educational Series. And, of course, on anything we visit about, you can reach out to one of us. We'll be more than happy to talk about your winter supplementation uh, plans moving forward. Um, I always say this this time of the year. Folks, don't let your cows get pulled down too hard on their body condition. Uh, we, we've been through some extreme weather. We know that they're, depending on where you're at, the cattle don't look as good as, as what maybe they should for this time of the year. Going into this tough time of year, folks, don't don't let them get pulled down too too far before you start with a supplementation plan. Moving directly into the cattle markets, uh, do have our report for this week. The exodus continues, folks. I've talked to people from across the state. Kind of always like to poll others and see what's happening at other uh, auction markets and sale barns and. The trend is continuing, folks. These large runs of cattle, um, high numbers of cows being sold, it, it continues. Um, the two factors that are driving these high sale volumes, we talked about them extensively, one being the drought, dry conditions, the lack of hay, the lack of hay prospects moving forward, but also the, the sheer market is driving a lot to town. Whenever you have cull cows and cull bulls bringing the, at the price levels that they are, yeah, naturally it makes it an easy decision to get those cattle moved. And that continues. There's a lot of optimism in the cattle markets right now. The futures markets are actually in the driver's seat right now and pushing the cash markets forward. I'm hearing reports from folks that uh, buy a lot of cattle to go out on wheat in some of the big wheat country in Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas. The demand is huge there. They've got a lot of moisture depending on where you're at. And, and, and that's a wide range I just gave in those three states. But uh, there's been a lot of moisture across some of the portions of those states. And I think that the demand is going to be high. And we're seeing it right now. People are starting to gather wheat cattle and, and try to get that's put together for that winter wheat season, and it, it, that's really affecting the, the calf prices. So I'll go on and give the market report. I, I, I try every time we do this to add two disclaimers. One, the fact that these are self-reported prices by the local auction markets. These aren't USDA graded market reports, so quality can have a huge influence on on uh, on what I report here, and I have to take it at face value for what it is. The other thing that I want to uh, that I usually report on, sometimes I forget to, but is is the confidence I have in the reports. I've got medium confidence in this. There were a couple of auction markets that didn't have their results posted for the time period, so I've I've got medium confidence in it enough to. To, to have some confidence, but not high confidence level. Um, so this uh, market report covers the time period last week, which was uh, September the 11th through the 15th. And I'll give you the averages first on 500 to 600 pound steers. The average price was $1.55 to $2.49 per pound. Five to six weight heifers, $1.46 to $2.30. On coal cows, 73 cents per pound to a dollar 17 cents per pound. Uh, Coal bulls 79 cents to a dollar 33. Bread cows, y'all y'all remember I only report the top end average uh, due to uh, market concerns and the way that these market results are reported. I don't report the average of the low prices. The average high price on bread cows was 1662 dollars and 50 cents. Uh, pears, uh, the av- average price was $763.75, all the way to $1,962.50. Uh, one of the new, it's not really new now, I've done it several uh, news updates in a row, but one thing that I've started reporting is percent change from two weeks ago, which was the last time we did this report. On the five to six weight steers, they, uh, posted a 2.79% increase, five to six weight heifers, 1.34% increase. We saw decreases on coal cows at 2% and about 10% on coal bulls. 
I think I said this during the last news update, folks. I think that's a sheer volume, a, a product of volume. I think that these large amounts of coal cows and coal bulls hitting the markets are just weighing over. Um, they're, they're overwhelming the system in place. These cow plants, these uh, killing bull plants, these places that are uh, that are trying to get those products marketed. I think the sheer numbers are just catching up with us, folks, plain and simple. But I'm going to go back to what that average price was on coal cows, 73 cents to $1.17. That's still excellent money on coal cows. Bulls are, are up there just as well at 79 cents to $1.33. That is good money on these coal animals, folks. Do not let that be a, a determining factor just because we posted just a, a slight decline in these coal prices. Uh, you got to realize where we're coming from here, folks. We're still near record territory on all these prices. It is encouraging to see the increase in prices, however, on these five to six weight cattle, these calves. You know, that's a common weaning wages between five and six hundred pounds, both on steers and heifers. And we both, they both saw increases. So we, we did go through a little bit of a lull there, but it looks like we're on the climb again on those. I don't give anything in the way of forecast because I don't like, I get proven wrong a lot on a, lot, on a wide variety of subjects and I don't try to open myself up for it any more than possible. But I will say this, I do think that these cold cow and cold bull prices may rebound whenever uh, these uh, sale barn censuses, whenever these handles kind of drop off a little bit and give these co uh, coal plants uh, time to catch up, so to speak. With that being said, I want to wish you a, a good a good morning, a good day, and I hope that you got some rainfall last time, and let's keep praying for rain. We've got a long way to go to get up, up to where we need to be. Ashley, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, sir. Um, one thing to note, so Lee mentioned the rice straw. We do have some agents that are collecting data on that. So if you are bailing rice straw, um, I know Bradley Pusall is the one that reached out to um, to me to see if anybody was pulling it. Um, I think maybe Jeremy Abair. I should know this, but I cannot remember exactly who all was involved in that study and trying to collect that data. So um, if you are bailing it and you're willing to send in some of your results, um, reach out to one of us, reach out to me and I'll figure out exactly who to get that to. Um, but we'd appreciate the data for that. Um, so we have that for, for years moving forward. I want to make a comment. We had the Dean Lee research stations, um, beef cattle and forage field day last Thursday afternoon. Um, thank everybody that came out for that and attended that with us. I want to say thank you again to all of our speakers, um, especially our producer panel that came and spoke a little bit on cattle marketing. Um, so it was great to to be able to see everybody. We had good weather and really enjoyed that particular event. Um, moving into this week, this Thursday, the 21st, we do have our Northeast Beef and Forage Field Day that'll be at the Goldmine Plantation in Mangum. I've been mentioning that on the past couple of news updates. Um, so you're still, even if you didn't get your RSVPs in, just let us know. Send me an email or send me a text. Let me know you're going to come. We just need that head count for, for the lunches, but we hope to see you there. Uh, registration, I believe, off the top of my head was 8.15, um, somewhere in the morning. So I've got that information in the video and podcast descriptions. If you have questions on that event, you can reach out to me or Dr. Wink Allison, and we can get you that info. Uh, looking forward to some other events. I have gotten some questions about our pregnancy determination clinic that we have at the Hill Farm um, each October. That event is full, but if you are interested in it, uh, again, we highly recommend that you reach out to Lee or reach out to me. Let us know you're interested in it so we can put you on the wait list for that event for next year. The AI class at the Dean Lee Research Station is going to be October 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, we have a wait list for that, but I don't think that it's completely filled up yet. I need to check with Dr. Glenn Gentry. He coordinates that. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, contact me and let me know, and I can see where we're at on that uh, and get you that particular information. Then on Saturday, October 21st, um, we are going to have two events that day. So that morning is going to be the Acadiana Beef and Forage Field Day at the Iberia Research Station in Generet. Um, and then that afternoon, I believe starting at 3, uh, is going to be a field day at Livingston Parish. So uh, when I get some more information from Bobby Bingham on that one, 
um, as well as the committee that's doing the Acadiana Field Day. I'll get all of that posted too, but keep those on your schedule for October 21st. Uh, after that, then y'all we're moving into state fair. So um, it's going by fast. <laughs> I feel like this fall is already kind of speeding by and we, we're just now in September. I think that that's all that we have. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. We still um, are in the middle of our cattle marketing webinar series for Beef Brunch. So today, when this is being released on September 19th, Tyler Bro is doing a webinar on buyer expectations. And then next Tuesday, September 26th, uh, Lee is going to come in and talk about adding value to calves. Um, I think maybe doing a little bit, just touching on some cull cow, uh, cull bull marketing for us as well. Both of those are at 1030 a.m. Um, if you're able to join us live, if not, don't worry. We are getting those recorded um, and we, we have to get edits done on those. So once all the edits and everything are done, I'll have all of those posted to our YouTube channel. And I think that that's all the events that I need to talk about. Um, we'll keep you posted like always. And I know we say at least at it while ago, reach out to us if you have any questions or if there's anything that we can help you all with. Thank you.